Peter B. Labour Party fume as thugs attack supporters in Lagos on Saturday's final rally ahead of the polls. And Serap calls on the International Criminal Court to probe growing cases of violence. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, and his party on Saturday fumed over the high level of political intolerance in Lagos State after suspected thugs attacked the party supporters and destroyed several vehicles. The Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council called on the international community to hold the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, and Governor Babajide Sonwolu responsible for the attack, just as the Lagos State chapter of the APC has described the allegations as reckless and irresponsible. Now, a few days to the polls, the Labour Party held their final rally in Lagos, um, getting ready for the elections. Joining us to discuss this and more is Akin Olaoye. He's a public affairs analyst and the convener of the October 1 rally last year. It's good to have you join us, Akin. Always a pleasure. Um, let's talk about what happened over the weekend. Um, for a lot of people, um, it was just another rally. But then, of course, the videos started surfacing online. Um, most of the videos I saw came from um, the entertainer Charlie Boy. Um, I paid no attention at first because, you know, it's party politics. But then I kept seeing more and more of these videos. I I'll start by asking um, why you think that these violence um, could be attributed to the Lagos State government or the APC? Uh, so the first start by saying uh, the party, the Lagos uh, Presidential Planning Committee did a great job along with the support groups in organizing, making sure we had routes defined, um, again, making transportation options available to people. And we said we wanted to make a very colorful display of the support that Peter will be enjoying here in Lagos, having rallies, you know, emerge from different LGAs with floats, uh, have a procession all the way to TBS, and make it almost like a carnival, show the beauty of Lagos. The fact that as Nigerians, as our democracy improves, we can show the world and prove to the world that we are indeed on the right track. Uh, I think, you know, it's only unfair that some elements who I would attribute uh, enjoy some layer of protection or perhaps uh, cover from the state government because you would not allow, allow criminality and third way to thrive in broad daylight given the extensive hours uh, we saw violence being meted out uh, against uh, obedience on Saturday. So yes, uh, I think again, um, it would not be reckless to state that perhaps there's some level of state involvement, knowing fully well that again, you have the police force, you have the military, you have the DSS, all you know, uh, active here in Lagos, and to sit idle for hours between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. Reports of violence along Lekki Expressway. You saw the bus that was parked on Thornmailand Bridge, a tire taking off, no plate number, last mile not even allow people move the bus. It caused crazy traffic, Adele G, Adele Bridge. You saw a gridlock there, people were being attacked. All of this you can never say, you cannot say it was unconnected to the fact that we had a rally where they expected a huge turnout. Um I'm still trying to understand how the government comes in here. Now, you're blaming security agencies for not showing up to... I mean, how often do we see security operatives turn up to places where acts of violence, even crime and criminality take place? How often, how swift so is that, that we, response? Something we did that was very deliberate. When we published the um, rally routes, we did so knowing that we wanted the public to be aware, make the government aware. Um, if these criminal elements could see that we were having people assemble at Jakande or perhaps at Yaba or somewhere in Amu World of Fame, it's equally okay to say that security operatives could equally see this location and say, you know, perhaps it's a political rally. There might just be that perhaps hint of possible unrest or maybe just, you know, the back and forth that you get. Maybe we stay a lot more attentive. They didn't pay any attention to that. So I first find that very, very unusual. Secondly, LASMA, which is the traffic agency in Lagos, as I just attributed to a park down for bus on the tip of Thurmeland Bridge that caused a gridlock and it sat there unchecked for hours. If you park a G1 or 
a Bentley at the tip of Tomeland Bridge. They will not let that vehicle sit there for more than two minutes. How much more a yellow downfall bus without a front wheel or without plate numbers? I just think, again, there was sort of the unmentioned support from the state government because LASMA, I will say again, is operated by the state government of Lagos. And if they failed or they were derelict in their duties, I will call that tacit support. Hmm, interesting. Um, I'd like to know, because I remember when there was a... Um, a rally, an APC rally in Akwaibom. I do remember that Governor Odomimano was responding to um, remarks that were made by the presidential candidate of um, the APC in Akwaibom State. And he talked about the fact that he gave them security. He made sure that the stadium was open to them. And he gave them everything to make sure that they had a very safe and you know, violence-free uh, rally. Can you say same of the Lagos State Government, where you accorded the security that you needed, um, the protection, and of course, making sure that your candidates, all of those who were um, you know, um, at that particular rally, were all safe and protected? So we obviously have a security apparatus as part of the campaign uh, committee. Uh, we call it no, 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 I'm asking from the state government. Yes, of course, and I was getting to that. And the security team would interface with the state government, with the local authorities, making sure they're aware of the plans, security architecture around TBS, inside of the arena. But then again, on the roads, on the streets, we expect lives and properties to be protected, as well as the right to peaceful assembly and freedom of association. It now appears as though there's a target on the back of every obedient or every Labour Party member in Lagos State. And this hostile environment that was seen, breed, and fest up under the watch of a state government is one that we are calling a lot of attention to. I will say this, um, nobody would wake up and say the governor or the deputy governor or perhaps the cabinet would wake up and direct violence at opposition members, but you need to make sure that as part of demonstrating the fact that we have good leadership and good governance, you want to do everything within your control with making sure you're not embarrassed in that governor seat. Hmm. So and you're saying that this was not done? Oh, uh, no. I mean, there was a uh, lack of leadership. Uh, I would even go as far as saying that uh, the reports of violence across the state has not even been addressed by the Lagos state governor in every sane society. Uh, when you see the spay of attacks in multiple, uh, you know, areas in Lagos, broad daylight, we're not talking under cover of darkness, any responsible state executive will stand up and say, you know what, not in my state. And you've not seen any kinds of feedback or communications from the governor's office. It just shows, again, for me, tacit support. Uh, the uh, candidate on the Labour Party, uh, of the Labour Party, uh, Badiba Rose Vivor, actually made stops to visit a number of victims across hospitals uh, in the state yesterday. So, I mean, it's equally okay that the governor's office releases a message and says, you know, perhaps we regret any, you know, violence, we will investigate, we'll look into it. But none of that. It's just dead silence. And then if you now look at a Lagos state that has become very hostile territory for opposition parties, you drive around the state, there's not a billboard. You find very little campaign, uh, what you call it, insignia, because you put it up, they tear it down, and many times there's even evidence where Banky W showed videos on his Twitter page where it was Lagos State government officials in a vehicle basically washing down his posters. So you have a very hostile environment in Lagos for politics. At a point, APC was an opposition party where you had a ruling party, PDP, uh, you know, at the federal level. And if we had an environment where opposition was not allowed to thrive, would they even be in office today is the question. So I think we can do better, we can be better, and I think we must do better. Um, I know that there are excuses uh, such as there could have been people who are um, somewhat followers of the party, but not necessarily people from the government. They could have been overzealous supporters of, of whatever party. But again, I'm just wondering why this has to be just the APC. Could this have not been any other person that is in a position of the Labour Party? I'm just curious. So the morning of the rally, uh, I think the night before, we got a video, which I mean, a, an audio clip, which has gone on I Twitter. I was about to get to that. Uh, and a ballet, or I don't know what his title is, don't know if he's deserving of that title, uh, was basically promoting violence and threatening, uh, you know, uh, in injury or perhaps harm on non-APC supporters. This morning, you saw the leaked video from a party chieftain's residence, uh, Osho Mole, who again, 
comrade, as you would like to call him, someone that you would hope represents the best of what Nigeria uh, you know, uh, has to offer as a labor man. But no, again, when you see sponsored or perhaps promoted violence from people at the upper echelon of leadership in the APC, it only goes as far as telling you that perhaps their foot soldiers are only carrying the bidding of the paymasters. Hmm. Interesting. Um, you know, in my place, there's a balance that says a marriage that's going to be good. You know it from the bachelor's eve. Um, and if we're seeing this much violence, and not just in Lagos, we've seen electoral violence over and over, pre-campaign violence, we've seen it happening. Um, Zamfara, we saw it happen in Kaduna, and it's spreading in leaps and bounds. Yes, a few condemnations here and there, but do you see an active will to put an end to this, or are we going to see same during the elections? Can we say that people can go out and vote on the election day without fear of being attacked? So what, f what has fueled this uh, new movement, the obedient movement, the Obidati campaign, has been the energy of the youth. And I think uh, the average Nigerian youth you know, has been subjected to extreme poverty, unemployment, uh, skyrocketing forex rates. You look at you know, uh, a very insecure nation where you can't even traverse you know, across communities. And there's just this palpable anger many feel. And I'm only saying this because as part of the frustrations we've, we've had, we had to live through and express every day, I think we've become very defiant, right? Mm -hmm. We now are a generation that says we will you know, achieve anything we want to regardless of the odds stacked against us. So coming out election day in mass numbers, I, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Uh, again, there are equally others that will maybe concerned. Uh, and I think this attempt to perhaps victimize or inflict violence is an attempt to promote voter apathy. Where mm -hmm. people stay home, they are scared of coming out because again, from 99 to date, you've heard and seen, you know, again, evidence of violence at polling units. And I think it's become something that's become accustomed to Nigerians. Mothers locking doors, telling their kids not to go out and vote, hide your head. Politics is for the worst of our society. And we are saying no. As a generation, we will rewrite the blueprint of politics in Nigeria. Gone are the days of politics where you people, people to mobilize to fill up TBS. Gone are the days of politics where we will print the candidate space on an Indomie noodle sachet. Gone are the days where you would again show up to the polling unit and pay people to vote. We will be that generation that does it differently. So bring your worst, deploy your thugs, uh, unleash any amount of violence. We will stand at the polls on election day and vote Obi Dati and vote good people into office because Nigeria has to be good in our lifetime. Let me bring up um, a situation between PFN and your presidential candidate. It's one of the biggest stories. First, it was forwarded messages uh, with the signature of some person with the PFN saying that your presidential candidate had given two billion naira um, to the. Um, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, which has one way or the other cost to stay, even though um, the group has said they don't know anything about this money. Um, but your party is touted to say we don't give money. So how did your presidential candidate come about two billion naira? Uh, the Peter I, Obi I know, uh, someone I've even, again, had extensive conversations with personally, will not even drop an envelope of 200,000 naira to even start with talk more two billion. How much is Labour Party worth to even start with? So it's laughable. When you would sit and come up with propaganda, at least find people that have PhDs in propaganda to do your dirty dealing. You take the letterhead of a church, of an individual, you go to that address, you can't even find it. Uh, equally, the, uh, the individual involved has actually released a video recording uh, again, dissociate himself from any such, and you start asking yourself, at what point will propaganda and violence cease to exist in our politics? Also, disenfranchisement of voters. When are we going to do away with this kind of nasty politics? I call it Amala politics and politics of thuggery. And again, as a movement, as a party, from Obi and Dati, two very decent gentlemen, and equally the party leadership with uh, Chairman Abure, all you hear is, hey, get your PVC, get out there, promote your candidate and vote. You don't hear any of this other nonsense. From the Labour Party camp, you, hear, you, you rarely will find people promoting propaganda. We don't have time for that because we have a manifesto. We have you know, things we need to do for Nigeria to move this country forward. Taking this country from consumption 
from consumption to production. Let's talk about policies. Let's talk about what will make Nigeria a great nation that unborn generations will be proud of. Nobody has time for religious and you know, ethnic bigotry that you've seen the APC promote in the last few days. And when I say the APC, you have the likes of Festus Kayamo, the bio onanugas of the world. These are what I call political hacks, political jobbers, if I would even title them that, because again, you've been in power for the last eight years as a ruling party, Run on your party's accomplishments and leave propaganda alone. But here we are trying to divide this country where we should be uniting each other. Uh, talking about bringing it back to Lagos again, um, the campaign rally, we saw videos and pictures by the opposition, several people posting that it was an empty, um, you know, a TBS um, and some, some sort of a, a jest about. Um, oh, is this the crowd? Where are the obedience? And we saw a lot of it. Um, <laughs> it's interesting that um, we also had um, a similar drama with the opposition um, where we saw pictures also that were posted. Many would say allegedly those pictures were taken from a crowd from uh, outside of the country. Um, what was the turnout like for the OB campaign in Lagos? Yes, we saw the videos. Uh, at Alaba and all, but then um, a lot of people also query the numbers of people who show up at campaigns. Does it amount to the number of people who will show up on election day to vote? Because it looks like some form of, um, at, for the want of, because we're on, ra on TV, I don't want to say it's, it's like a contest of sorts. My crowd is bigger than your crowd. Uh, but the, what does that amount to on election day? So the, 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 the primary reason TBS was chosen was because of the security architecture it offers. It's an enclosed space uh, that allows for um, security outfits to be able to control access, uh, equally public safety. Um, we were not even looking for an arena to compete in terms of size, although uh, we would have had a greater turnout if you did not have Third Milan Bridge being blocked off, Lekki Expressway being blocked off, and again, attacks and promotion of violence against innocent Nigerians looking to express their freedom of association. I would say this, you walk into a banking hall in the middle of a market, and you find a thousand customers in line. The thousand customers in line does not reflect the total deposit in the bank account of the account holder. So this whole politics of, again, mobilizing people, paying them 10,000 naira, 2,000 naira, putting them in face caps and t-shirts with Agbado print on it, or perhaps, you know, uh, rallying people from different, what I call voting blocks, market women, using poverty where you're shutting down markets and, again, imposing on citizens of a nation against their will, freedom of participation as not a choice, but an expectation. No markets were closed in Lagos for the Ubidati rally compared to when APC had their rally in Lagos. Go and verify. Every market in Lagos was open. Nigerians were allowed to go about their businesses. Employers did not mandate their staff, even where they are Labour Party obedient supporters, to say, oh, you cannot come to work today, you're coming to TBS. So that arena, that kind of atmosphere of politics is what we want. Freedom of association. So I apologize to the APC heads uh, if we did not shut down markets and force people into TBS. Perhaps uh, is not how we operate. Uh, we want a country where people feel like they can choose to do whatever they want, even when they have government authority with that big stick that can perhaps impose on them. And you equally see what the Obidati campaign has brought about to politics in Lagos. For the first time in the history of this state, you are seeing people from all walks of life, all, ethnic, all ethnicities, religions saying, you know what, we believe in this candidate, his message resonates, and we will turn out to vote. Now, there's this false narrative that when you pack a stadium and you have rented crowds and unfortunately the two ruling the two establishment parties other than labor party have a talent at mobilizing you have to clap for them when you fill up rallies or arenas and you say look at all these people we have tremendous support out there it's a lie it's political deceit we only wanted people that felt the need to come out to hear Peter Obi's message, it was not a show of strength or perhaps using that as optics to say, oh, when we get to election day, because we could fill up TBS with 100,000 people, therefore we're going to win the election. No, we are campaigning. We are working hard. And there's this 
you know, uh, narrative out there that, oh, you know, uh, we're going to win. APC is going to win. Only if you're going to cheat is when you truly say you're going to win. We are working to win. We're working to win the hearts and minds of Nigerians. But isn't and that the spirit you're supposed to go into any contest with? Being certain that you, you will win? Because I'm, I'm guessing if you go into a contest with the, a defeatist mentality, then you're not really certain that no, you No, no, we're win. not saying... We're not, there's not, it's not so saying about... If I am contesting against you, I'm, I have to keep saying... We maybe have the help number me of voters win. to win in Lagos. We are working to win. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to wake up in a country where it's, you know, it's a democracy and say, oh, we have won as though you're going to write the results. Gone are those days. I mean, kudos to the president for signing Electoral Act reform. Elections are different in Nigeria, 2015 and 2019. Citizens can stand at the polling unit, 300 meters from the ballot box, observe, watch, and equally become stakeholders in politics. Gone are the days where party agents can have the, what I call, dubious dealings and do what they want or whatever they wish. Citizens will participate. So we are saying to ourselves, we're working to win. In Lagos, which again, APC has held ground, we will take ground in Lagos, we will campaign hard, we will win the hearts and minds, we will win the presidential, we will work to win the gubernatorial, and Lagos will be put in the hands of more deserving leaders that can offer good governance. So staying with, you know, the elections, um, I I'm going to talk about major concerns. Now, the INEC has been quoted to say that 200 plus polling units will be disenfranchised because elections will not hold in those polling units. Uh, what are your concerns about this release? Because uh, there have been fillers over time that, you know, uh, there might be surprises just a few days before elections. Is this one of those surprises that you envisaged? So I think um, you have to give any kudos um, where they deserve their flowers, although many of us feel very disgruntled about the PVC process. Uh, we think PVC, um, you know, uh, perhaps uh, distribution should occur perhaps a day to election. Uh, but that aside, um, INEC being transparent in identifying communities, I read that memo, where there were no registered voters, mm -hmm. where, again, perhaps there might be some level of insecurity that makes it virtually impossible to hold elections. 240 out of over 190,000 is a drop of sand in the bucket. So I don't think we will cry, you know, over 240 uh, polling units. Now, it will be sad that I wake up on election day, I walk to a polling unit and find out that elections are not holding. That's why you see many of us being concerned that the Lagos NURTW is lobbying to transport voting materials. We don't want any of that because, again, we know the NURTW is a voting arm of the uh, establishment party. So as long as you don't have those types of scenarios, I think we're just fine. And I like being professional, being upfront, communicating transparently is what we truly deserve. Mm. Let's talk about, I mean, today is World Radio Day. I know we're not on radio, it's TV, but it's very I intriguing, the, the theme of today's um, celebration. It's talking about the media, the radio, and peace. And peace is the word here, the operating word. Um, what is the Labour Party doing to make sure that the message of peace is preached? Because we cannot have free, fair, and credible elections if we don't have a peaceful atmosphere for that to happen. And we know with all of the problems that INEC is facing with the burning uh, of the uh, offices, the attack on some of their personnel, and now we're seeing attacks on political parties, uh, whether it be PDP, uh, Labour Party, and, and we've seen so many things. Uh, my next guest is obviously going to talk about, you know, taking this to the... Um, to the courts, the international courts, but how is the Labour Party? Because again, there are people who would say that the Labour Party followers, some very overzealous ones on social media, not necessarily as peaceful as we'd want to. So are you preaching the message of peace, even as you are also propagating a kind of Nigeria that you want to see? We need peace in that type of Nigeria, right? Yeah. So it's, um, I'll first start by saying the average obedient, the average Labour Party supporter is only again, seeking a country that works, a country in which the son of nobody can become somebody, a country in which the unborn generation would meet and be proud of the people that were here before them, a country in which my green passport is respected across the world, a country in which my leader stands on a podium and addresses other nations and we are held to a very high esteem. Now, I say this because you've never heard Obi or Dati uh, Obi, Obidati, perhaps I combine both of them, promote violence or hostility in any of their messages. Even down to the Labour Party leadership, you would not find that. Go and verify. Now, people would always attribute 
uh, violence and perhaps you know um, hateful conversations to some of the uh, conversations on Twitter. Now, I've never seen any obedient leave Twitter, walk to somebody else's house on a machete, and say, I'm going to hurt you. So yes, when people have this conversation, and we call it bass bows, OK, within you know, the Gen Z, or perhaps the new era of new media, yeah, to some extent, it's part of what makes it you know, engaging. But then again, people ought to be civil in their discourse and how they conversate, because after elections, relationships should remain. Although some people don't need to be uh, you don't have to treat some people nice on social media, just giving the hate and vitriol they promote. When they do that, you dish it back to them. Now, I'm going to say this uh, as a closing remark on that question. In Lagos, as you've seen, we came out October 1st. We, uh, perhaps in our thousands, had held peaceful rallies, not destruction, not one record of violence. We came out last Saturday peacefully, well organized, not planning to destroy or to cause any kind of mayhem, but we were met with a violent attack by, again, unscrupulous characters connected to the ruling party. I will state that. And I will say this, for every obedient listening, we will never retaliate. You did not see one instance of retaliation where people were being attacked and then a reinforcement group went there and said, oh, let's go and have you know, a field day. None of that happened. So it only tells you a lot about the character of the individuals supporting the candidates and the people waiting to vote on February 25th, 2023. Well, Akin Olaoye is a public affairs analyst and the convener of the October 1 rally that held last year, 2022. Always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing Serap's petition over campaign attacks across the country. Stay with us. <laughs>